Hey everybody, Axel here from Axel Azuli Entertainment, and welcome back to Axel's Equestrian Reviews, where today we will be reviewing My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 1, Episode 9, Bridal Gossip. But now, for a brief plot synopsis of the episode. Twilight notices that nobody's out in town, everybody's hidden in their stores and stuff, and it's because a uh, zebra named Zakora has entered town, and everybody's afraid of Zakora, thinking she's a witch or something, so, uh, like an evil monster, so everyone hides from her. And uh, so, uh, Twilight says that it's all just a bunch of hooey, all the curses that they talk about, and hijinks ensue as they get cursed themselves. Well, cursed in quotation marks, I won't give any more away uh, than that. But, so, there were many good and bad things about this episode. The episode was very, very funny. There were some good highlights. Uh, now, usually, Pinkie Pie is one of my favorite parts of the show. Uh, and for her curse, as you may know, she got her tongue out so she couldn't speak at all. Now, normally that would be a con because I really like hearing Pinkie Pie, but they actually made it. Uh, they actually made me happy that they set Pinkie Pie up because he kept singing that song, that uh, song about Zakora for the entire beginning of the episode. And by the time she got her tongue all big, I was like, "Finally, you shut her up." Okay, now I don't have to hear that song anymore. And so I really enjoyed that. Uh, uh. Rarity getting her hair all poofy. Now, that was hilarious because she's all about fashion and she gets all poofy. That's just like, that was so funny to seeing her just freak out because her hair is all cray cray. And uh, all the other characters are great too. Twilight, I didn't really like Twilight's change that much or Horn All Flimsy. It was just kind of awkward. It wasn't really funny to see it uh, like the other ones. And Rainbow Dash, uh, Rainbow Dash was hilarious. He cut, uh, her had her wings upside down. And that's where the name Rainbow Crass came from, which is a big part of the whole series. So, that uh, I really enjoyed that. Uh, now, now, we, now I finally know what the origin for Rainbow Crass is. And finally, uh, Applejack being small. That was funny because there's the whole big sister thing. I'm your big sister. You should listen to me. And then she gets all small. And... Uh, Apple Bloom being all like, haha, I'm the big sister now. Uh, so that was pretty good. I think that Applejack probably enjoyed that. Uh, well, deserved that, I mean, not enjoyed. She deserves that. Because this episode, she was being really overprotective. Now, uh, I'd like to reference a video by Canned Cream uh, about analyzing Applejack's character. Now, Applejack is my least favorite pony, honestly. And it's because he's not really interesting, but I got kind of changed when I watched Candid Cream's video. And I realized that, yes, he is basically the straight guy of the group. He's the people who can help the other people not be so crazy anymore. Uh, when they go over the line, uh, Applejack's always the one to put them back, uh, pull them back. But the downside to this is, whenever you have an episode that has a lot of Applejack, you need to make her crazy. And that just doesn't work because her whole role is she's kind of the straight guy who keeps everyone else under control. So whenever you make her crazy, it's just, it just doesn't work. And with the big crazy, uh, her being super obsessive and overprotective, that just didn't work in my book. Just like a lot of people agree. Uh, what She wasn't bad in the episode, but she wasn't really good in that episode. I, have to, I just have to say that. That's just how I feel. And, uh, Zakora, we got to see her for the first time in this episode. She was great. Uh, I liked how they made her all menacing at first, and it turned out it was just the prejudices working against them, uh, making them bad. So, that's always a good thing when you realize, uh, that a book's not, uh, don't judge a book by its cover, which is the moral. Usually, I don't really like Don't Judge a Book by its cover because it's really cliche and really overdone. So I'm glad that they got rid of it on the ninth episode of the show so we don't have to deal with it too much during the series. And Apple Bloom, our first major appearance, I believe. And uh, back then, when I first saw Apple Bloom in that episode, the first time I ever watched the series, I didn't like Apple Bloom one from that episode. And my reason being is he just seemed like a whiny brat kid who just wants to act like an adult. And uh, I don't really like that. Uh, but she ended up, uh, she gets much better in the series. I just think she was a bit bratty for this episode. 
Despite this, one of my favorite parts of the entire episode <clears throat> is the fact that for the entire episode, Applejack is just completely terrified of Zakora, especially at the beginning. She's like shivering with fear, and uh, Apple Bloom's like, it's not that bad. She's not that scary. And it's really funny because Applejack's acting like the adult when really she's uh, terrified of Zakora, and that just cracks me up every time I see it. And one uh, last pet peeve that I had about this episode was Twilight Sparkle. Well, at the beginning, I really liked Twilight Sparkle in this episode because I was like, Twilight Sparkle knows what's going on. She knows curses are fake. She knows that Zakora's probably a good person. She's good. I'm going to... Uh, uh, and I like that because I like there to be at least one character who has some common sense. But in the end... She ended up turning to the dark side. They convinced her that she was evil. And that just really annoyed me because I uh, connect most with uh, Twilight Sparkle because personality-wise in real life, I am a lot like Twilight Sparkle more than any other pony I'm uh, like Twilight Sparkle. And to see her just uh, fall to peer pressure and be convinced of something so fake, it just kind of made me a bit angry. But other than that, she was great for the whole episode. Uh, so, this is a pretty good episode overall. It was very funny. I really enjoyed it. And for that, I'll have to give it... Oh, wait. I think I'm forgetting something. What was it? Oh, yes. Huh, I wonder. What curse did Fluttersy get? <sighs> She's an evil enchantress, and she does evil dances. And if you look deep in her eyes, she will put you in trances. Then what would she do? She'll mix up an evil brew. Then she'll gobble you up in a big tasty stew. So, watch out. Oh my gosh! One million out of five stars! Uh, but not serious to this. That was probably the best part of the entire episode. That was so amazing! Uh, I love that so much. And uh, fortunately, they bring it back in the episode where she with the pony notes in like season three or four. So I'm just looking forward to hear that voice again. But because of that voice, and the episode was really funny, all the flaws were kind of nitpicking. Overall, it was a really good episode. So I'm going to have to give it... Four out of five stars. Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Leave a comment in the section below to tell me your opinion on this episode. And next time, I will be reviewing Season 1, Episode 10. Uh, what is it? Swarm of the Century. I remember this is like my... Uh, I remember it as being one of my favorite episodes from Season 1. But until next time, I'm Axel from Axel's Equestrian Reviews. And... Goodbye!